Hello. Today I'd like to show you how I'm going to bind a quilt. Now I do my binding by machine and this is just my method. It's not necessarily a better method. It's just the way I do it. Um, I had actually been binding quilts for quite a long time when I realized that in fact most people bind them by turning them to the back and hand sewing them down. I had no idea that's how people did things and I couldn't understand it because I'm a machine sewer so I bind mine by machine and so this is how I do it. So here I've got um, my quilt which in actual fact is a placemat but it's the same as a small quilt and I'm going to uh, bind it so I've cut my binding strips already and they're two and a quarter inches wide and I'm going to join those diagonally so I'll show you how I do that. So I've laid one across the other and because I've still got the selvages on I've got the selvages sticking out because we don't want that heavier bit of fabric in there. So I'm just going to sew straight through from the point to the other point. Now you could draw a line if you wanted to, um, but I feel that I can probably see where I'm going in up. And it's that simple. Pull the threads, snip your threads away. And now I'm going to just trim that. I'm going to use the rotary cutter to do this little bit. So I'm going to lay my ruler on so that a quarter of an inch I've got a marking on my ruler of quarter of an inch and that's going to lay over that line of stitching so that I'm going to cut quarter of an inch away from that stitching line. And just take those away, you don't need those now. And so you can see that I've got a diagonal join there and I'm just wanting those that seam to be flat. So I'm just going to press that. I'm using a, a cotton linen mixed fabric here which is lovely to work with and makes lovely placemats but it is slightly heavier than the regular quilting cottons which is possibly going to give me a little bit of a problem with the binding but uh, no doubt that'll be helpful as well. So I'm just going to snip off those little points that just stick out there because we don't want those anywhere and so by doing it diagonally when we use it as a binding you don't get a bulk of a seam because it's spread over so that's why I've done that that way and I actually also want to do one more little press and um, so at the end I'm going to start I want to fold that over and just press it on the diagonal there and don't worry if it sticks a little bit past because we can trim that bit off so I just want a diagonal fold at one end and, and in that direction in particular. So now I'm just going to trim off any excess there and now I'm going to take my quilt and I'm actually going to sew the binding to the back of the quilt because I'm going to be bringing it round to the front of the quilt. So we're going to start on the back and I'm going to, it doesn't really matter where you start and I've just chosen to start somewhere on a side and so what I'm going to do is machine it down, but I'm just going to do a short bit of sewing, just the quarter of an inch in, just over that double fold bit there. So I'll do a little back stitch just to hold the threads. And just to there, and then I'm going to take it out of the machine, snip off my threads. And now I'm going to just fold this over so that the raw edges are all even. Now you could pin this if you wanted to, I'm not very good with pins because I find they stick into me enormously. Um, and I'm just going to start sewing now, probably somewhere between two and three inches down from where that overlap occurs. So there is a little area there that's not stitched at this stage. And again with my little back stitch just to hold that. And I'm going to sew all the way up to the corner except that I'm going to stop quarter of an inch before I get to the corner of the quilt. So I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam and I want to stop quarter of an inch back from the edge here. So you may find that again you may want to pop a pin in there and I'm going to do a little back stitch just to hold that and take that out of the machine, snip my threads and now for the corner. Because I want to be able to have nice mitered looking corners by stopping quarter of an inch back, when I fold this at a 45 degree angle, that quarter inch stop is in exactly the right place 
for my fabric. So I want that to be on a 45 degree angle, that fold there, which means that it's going straight out the top. And I'm going to fold it back over on itself, level with my raw edges. So you can see I've got this nice diagonal fold underneath, and that's starting level there, that fold. So then I'm going to go back into the machine, and starting right from the end, I'm going to do my next line of sewing. And I'm just with my quarter inch seam, I'm going to now go all the way along to the next corner, and I'm going to stop quarter of an inch before the next corner. Now, usually when I'm putting a binding on, I just put just an ever so slight amount of tension on the binding. I'm not pulling it really tight, but pulling it just slightly taut so that it, it's not sort of all loose and floppy. as I go, coming up to the next corner, getting ready to stop quarter of an inch before the end. And back stitch, and take it out of the machine. And the same thing again, I want to do that fold, so I'm going to fold it diagonally through, make sure that your binding is sitting together, fold through right through that diagonal, and fold it back over again so that the fold is level with the outside edge. Back into the machine, starting right at the end, and same thing along the next side. And being careful not to include your scarf as you sew. quarter of an inch before the end, backing up a little bit. Okay, I'm coming up with this corner. I need to, again, hold my binding folded over. Um, so I know a lot of people press their bindings over in half before they sew them on. I have, again, never done that. Being self-taught, it's a little one of those little things that I didn't ever do. But I've also found that because I'm going to be rolling that over, a hard press fold there isn't always helpful to me, so I find that I like to hold it over as I go. So back in, we've done our quarter, uh, uh, diagonal fold and fold over again. And here we're finding that this is the, the join in the binding that we're going to go over soon, and because it's on that diagonal, it's not going to cause us any sort of bumps or problems there. Remember to keep just a little bit of tension on your binding. The reason we keep a little bit of tension on the binding is that because that's a soft, um, with the quilting and things, it's kind of got hills and valleys. And if we stretched the binding out to suit um, the sort of looseness of the quilt, you'd find that your edges would wobble a bit. And this way we'll get a nice, firm, straight edge. Okay, last corner coming up. Stop that quarter of an inch before, back up a little bit. By now you've got the hang of this. Fold it through the corner diagonally, fold it over. Back in the machine. And now we're going to be coming up to this bit where we started. So th this is opened out here. So I'm going to just start that onto where the point is. And then if you've got the needle down, leave your needle down. And I'm going to just trim this uh, binding off short, just a bit short of where I started sewing before. So maybe half an inch beforehand. Just cut that off. Pop that inside. Bring that folded edge over. 
so that it's all sitting nice and neat there. Now because this is a slightly thicker fabric this join is going to be just slightly bulkier than it normally is on a quilt with the regular quilting cottons but it sits quite neatly. So now I'm just going to sew all the way across there right down to where my stitching started down here. And take it out of the machine. Now I've got some threads on the corners to snip off. And the other thing I do, because I've got a bit of bulk here where we've doubled over, and particularly where I've got a slightly thicker fabric, I'm actually just going to trim away some of that extra in there because it's going to make it much harder to roll that around the edge. So just being careful not to cut any of your stitching or your quilt. Just cut some of this bulk in the seam allowance away so that it'll roll over nicely for you. We just don't need any of that bulk in there. That'll make quite a difference. So now that's the binding all put on on the back side of your quilt. So now we're going to turn it over. And now on the right side of your quilt, we need to flip these edges over. We should just turn my little threads off here. And I'm just going to start sewing on this same edge. It doesn't actually matter where you start. Um, now, I'm not trying to achieve an exact sewing line that's going to be sewn on this side and on this side. What we're actually going to have is a sewing line on the back side, just slightly in on the quilt, um, because of where we're going to sew this down. So we're just rolling this binding edge over so that it sits just past the stitching line that's there. And we're going to stitch close to that folded edge now, of the binding folded edge, not the outside edge. And we can just start somewhere there. So maybe not even an eighth of an inch in, just close to the edge. And start a little lock stitch. Now, because this binding is a little bit thick, this, this is where we might run into a little bit of a problem, but I think we're going to be okay. So just holding it over. And now if you've got a needle down position, this is a really good time to use it because of coming up to the corners and things. And you don't want to have to stop and it's going to leap out of your control. Just through that bulky bit. Now when we're coming up to the corner, you want to be able to fold that so that you get this nice diagonal fold here. That's going straight through there. And then we're going to fold that over so that we get a mitre. And that should meet at the corners there. Now you could pop a pin in there, but like I said, I'm not very good with pins. So I'm just going to hold it until I get my needle in onto that second side of the binding. Pivot it round, turn it. Now this is where I just do a little back stitch for no particularly good reason, other than I just think it good idea, not when the machine sticks on the back though. And now I'm just going to go all the way along, just close to that edge. Start pulling that over and bring that fold straight through so that you can bring that one up over and get a nice mitre on the corner. Pivot it round and a little back stitch just over that corner, just holds it down nice and flat. straight down towards you. Bring that one up. Get your nice mitre so that it meets. Right. Back 
stitch all the way along again. straight down towards you, fold it up so that you get the nice mitre, pivot, little back stitch and here we are just coming back to where we started. Little back stitch just to lock your threads and now you can just snip them away. nicely bound placemat and I'll just flip it over and show you on the back side what I mean by the little stitching line that comes along just inside your binding edge. On a quilt this is barely noticeable unless you go looking for it of course um, and it just leaves a nice neat bound edge. So there I've done all of those placemats that you've been watching me quilt. And I think they make a great display. I think they look very nice on my table. Although I don't recommend anyone spilling anything on them just yet. So that's how I do my bindings. As I said, it's not necessarily a right or a wrong way, but it's definitely the way I do mine. So I just thought that might help somebody. Thank you.